Hi right, guys, welcome back to my channel. If you ever have one of those days where you had a machine to work on and you figured, eh, it's only gonna take a few hours, no problem, and then something bad happens, something you could have avoided, well, I don't think I could have avoided this. Today we're working on a Craftsman riding mower. As you can see, it's the DYT4000. It's a pretty decent mower. Uh, I see a lot of them in here. Usually they don't need much. This mower is for a repeat customer. I worked on one of his other machines, not this one. I don't normally get machines back that I've worked on before. Uh, it has a Briggs & Stratton 18 and a half horse Intec. Not a bad machine. It's got some oil leaks, uh, but it runs good. And he brought it in, told me that the key wasn't working, obviously. So we took a screwdriver and put it across the solenoid, and there you go. It started, or well, wanted to start. So we know the solenoid's bad. Uh, I'm old school. I don't test all this crap. If you have to stick a, a screwdriver across a solenoid, the solenoid's bad. So he needed it to run. So we're going to replace the solenoid. I already bought that. I'll list all the parts down in the description. Um, the carburetor, it's been sitting for a couple of months. The rain just started, even though it's June in Florida. We got our first rain two days ago. Global warming is real, people. So we're just getting into lawn season here, and it's almost the 4th of July. Uh, in fact, the 4th of July is two weeks from now. So I've got to clean out the carburetor right there um i tried spraying some fuel in and normally you can at least get it to bark start for a second and then die and that didn't happen so i ended up pulling the spark plug spraying some uh gasoline right down into the piston and that got it to bark so i couldn't figure out what else was going on and we ended up having to pull i pulled the fuel line <clears throat> This is your fuel pump right here, old school. Uh, that's what they put on all riding mowers, even commercial machines like that one over there. They all have the same fuel pump. Very small variations possibly in where the line comes out on the unit, but it all works the same. It's got three lines. Uh, this one here goes to the side of the engine and that's what creates the vacuum pulse. This one comes in from the fuel tank and then this one goes to the carburetor. And they're all pretty much the same. You really can't mess them up, but they go bad. So I pulled the fuel line off and flipped over the solenoid with a screwdriver, made it turn for a while, and I was getting nothing out of it. I put my finger on the end. I felt a very slight pulse. Sometimes you can, if you put your finger over the edge while you're turning the motor over, sometimes you can get it to prime. I even tried priming it, put some fuel into the pump. No good. So the fuel pump's no good. Not a big deal. So we got to clean the carburetor, replace the fuel pump. And the fuel pump, the old uh, the old hoses, the old lines, they're kind of hard and rotted. And one of them was uh, bent under the frame over here, how it comes through the frame and goes underneath. And it had cracked. And that's more than likely what caused the fuel pump to go bad. It couldn't suck the fuel. It was trying to suck really hard and it just blew the diaphragm so okay should be a pretty easy situation pull the fuel lines off it just feeds underneath of the machine back to the fuel tank well that's all fine and good and i always start with the dirtiest crap first so i pulled the fuel line uh this one right here is the new one i've already fed through so i pulled the old fuel line off off the tank the whole nine yards i flipped it up on its side that's why that chair is sitting over there. I put the steering wheel on the chair and flipped this thing up. Pulled the old fuel line out, fed the new fuel line in. Everything was going well. And when I went to attach it to the fuel tank underneath, that's when I realized that this thing's a few years old. <clears throat> right here is where the elbow comes out of the bottom of the fuel tank. And that's where you attach your fuel line. But when the old fuel line came off, it snapped that elbow right in half. 
so long story short you cannot take your new fuel line and attach it to the tank because there's no place to attach it it broke off so what do you do these tanks are expensive uh, they'll cost you a couple hundred bucks if you can't find a used one <coughs> and I have people that that try to do this stuff at home all the time and they bring it to me and they say, well, I, I broke the fuel tank and I don't want to spend a couple hundred bucks plus labor to put it back together. Well, you know, are you interested? Do you want the tractor for parts or something? And I give them 50 bucks. And I have a real simple fix for this problem. Well, it's not real simple. Unfortunately, it takes about an hour. Uh, but, you know, time I have. We're coming out of a pandemic. This is my job. And this is a customer who did want it fixed. So, I gave him a price for the whole job, and when I give a price, it's not an estimate. I don't up the price because something else went bad, unless it's something that was completely unforeseen. In this case, I even mentioned to him, it's possible that the gas tank could break, and I'm not going to charge you extra if I have to fix that. But I know some secrets, so today you're going to learn that secret. I'm going to have to back this up to film it, but we are going to have to take this red part of the tractor off this is all one piece I'll show you where all the bolts are how everything comes apart we have to do that because we have to remove the tank because as you saw where I was pointing in order to fix the tank we have to drill a new hole and I can't fit a drill in there so in order to just put a hole in this thing uh, we have to take the motor half apart so I'm going to show you how to do that basically what we're talking about here and again I'll put all the parts part numbers down in the description this is what we're dealing with Stens makes this rotary makes this Oregon makes this um, I don't know who else honestly Briggs might even make it it is a rubber bushing it's a wonderful thing you can see it's got a hole in it oh, hello hello um, basically what you do is you drill a new hole in the tank and then you take this side fat side out so if the tanks above you the holes on the bottom you push this up through the tank and then let's see if I can put this on the tree pod and give you a better idea of what's going on so you drill your hole you stick that up through and then I bought uh, the elbow it comes in three different ways. You can get an elbow with a shutoff, and this is up underneath the tractor. We don't need a shutoff. You can get a straight up and down, or you can get an elbow, and I wanted an elbow. That's metal, uh, which is much nicer than the old plastic. And I'm going to show you how to insert this into the tank after we drill a new hole. Then this gets inserted in, and this fat part here widens the rubber that's inside the hole, and Bob's your uncle. You can fix it. Uh... I normally don't give too many prices on parts because it varies depending on where you are in the country and what your local dealer charges. But for this, and this particular elbow here is Sten's part 120-196. It's called an elbow fitting. It's a one quarter inch inner diameter. Uh, this is how the bushings come. I looked up the part number on it and I have it just not in front of me um, But your local dealer lawnmower parts place should just be able to pull that for you This these two pieces right here cost me four dollars and ninety five cents including tax um, So instead of spending 200 bucks to buy a new tank You can fix it for five bucks might be more in your area but that's the point so in a second I'm gonna set you up and I'm gonna show you how to pull this thing apart okay obviously we're going to have to remove this entire top section so we're gonna start by removing this this is the plug underneath of your seat this little thing right here pull it out with your fingernail or a screwdriver and just give it a pull it comes right off and down here it has a little clip on it. You can usually just push up with your one finger and pull with the other side. There's two of them. Push it apart and pull at the same time and it just comes out. Now that's loose. 
because when we pull this apart, that wire is not going to come with it. Uh, then we just have a couple of bolts. 9 sixteenths. There's a bolt inside of this spring and inside of this spring. We're going to take those two bolts off. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back with you. Okay, next. We're working on this. This is your cup holder. It just clips in and out. It just pulls out. Nothing to it. It just kind of sticks in place and you pull it out. So I'll take that out. We have to take this assembly apart right here. This is your forward, neutral, and reverse. And this assembly has to come out. Now, it's got five bolts in it. Two that are this long. Bingo. And three that are very short. And you'll see that you have to get to them from underneath the wheel well. There's one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. The three short ones go here, two on the bottom and one on the top. The two longer ones are here and there's a reason for that. When I pull it out, I'll show you. But there's a reserve, a reverse safety switch on these Craftsman machines. They come on various ones, uh, but there's a reverse safety so that you cannot mow, the blades cannot be turning when you go into reverse. So if your PTO clutch is on and your blades are spinning and you try to put it in reverse, it hits that switch and cuts the engine off. That's a safety mechanism. I hate them. Do what you want with them. But maybe after this video, you'll understand what it is on this particular machine. And if you don't want to put it back, well, that's on you. You bought the machine. You do with it what you want. So anyway, I went underneath and I pulled out those five bolts. It takes a 3 8 inch socket to do that. And then this thing just slides a little bit forward. There's two little ends on there that slide into these two holes. <clears throat> these two indents here. There's just two little thingies that slide in there. And then this comes off. Now, the olden days we used to unscrew this top knob. Maybe yours has a full plastic handle that will come off, that won't come off. I've unscrewed these before and it's it's broken the threading because it's so old. And you're trying to epoxy it back together. I'm not gonna bother with that. First of all, we're just taking the fuel tank out. You can just kind of put that in there like that, let it drop down. If you really wanna take it off, it will come off. You just bend the plastic a little and pull it off. But for us, we just need it underneath of this red shroud so that we can remove it. Make sure you don't lose your bolts. I put them in my cup holder. This is what your spring looks like. Remember a second ago I said we need to pull these two springs. The spring just has a bolt and a washer. Goes right into there. You feed it back through. <clears throat> you put it back and you just tighten it down. Real easy. We're almost done. We're almost done getting to the, the real work. Don't lose your tools. Now. What we have next is basically two more bolts. I'm gonna see if I can't show you what they are. On each side, underneath your foot pad, I pulled this one up so you could see it. There's a bolt right there. So directly underneath, see if I can get to it. I really can't, I'm not. I'm gonna keep trying here. Yeah, okay. So underneath of here, you have your choice of two bolts. This one bolts onto the frame. You can either take that nut out right there, or this nut goes to a bolt, and that's the one that I showed you from up top. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you take out, but you only need to take out one. So in this case, they are round heads with a square bolt body that goes through the frame. So you don't need to try to get a bolt or a, a wrench on the back of it. I'm gonna take this bolt out on both sides and then we're ready to lift this thing off. It's really that easy. I'll be right back. Okay, now the bolts that I showed you underneath of here that were attached to the frame, that's it right there. 
a 9 16 bolt and you can see if I'm not shaking too badly it's a round head bolt with a square notch right there that goes through the frame so you don't need to put a wrench on there just stick it in the square hole the square will stop it from turning it also has a a nylon stop nut on the back which is 9 16 and I took that out on both sides and I also decided to take these bolts out right here this one from here this one from here now this front one I left because it's close to the pedal and it's not going to make much of a difference on the other side I took all three out there's no nuts on the back of them it's a bolt that bolts into the frame and those bolts hold your steering column and your pedestal so nothing's going to fall nothing's going to change but what it's going to do is when I go to lift this thing off those bolts would have been in the way so by taking them out now there's nothing left in the way we unscrew the gas tank cap because that'll be in the way and we save that guy for last make sure you keep all your bolts and nuts and everything where you need to you pretty much only go in one spot so you're not going to get them wrong the reflector fell off the back there's no rear lights on it's just a reflector i'll probably just glue that back on for them just because i'm a nice guy and if everything works out the way it does in my head which is a scary place to be this should just lift off thumbs crossed thumbs crossed hey now just gotta go higher than that lever and you just gotta slide it out oh working class kit makes good now that only took me about I don't know 15 minutes maybe I showed you what to do how to do it and then I actually did it off camera <coughs> So it's not really a big deal when you understand how it works. This is that switch I was talking about underneath. Okay, and you see it attaches there on the wire. The two long bolts go in each end and that attaches back onto that because when you go to put it in reverse, it closes that switch and shuts off the machine if the blades are on. So you could just unplug that if you want and connect those wires there with a connector or put it back in place and keep your safety. So now, what we have to do is undo the tank. There's a bolt there that goes into the frame. Underneath all this furry, grassy, crappy crap, there's another bolt there. And we have to take this tank off so we can flip it over and fix it. See you in a minute. All right. So, the magic of film, I took that bolt out. I took that bolt out, 9 16 and there it lifts off the tank and you see it's all wet and mess because of the fuel that leaked it's still dripping a little so we're going to bring it in put it on the shop table there's your filter or there's your tank and our problem i want to put my cap back on so we don't get any dirt in the tank you can see how filthy nasty this tank is i will probably clean it and degrease it before i put it back or at least clean the dirt off of it now that it's off I can show you the problem mate aha oh it actually looks like this one somebody might have fixed previously but here my friends is where the old fuel went on and it's supposed to have a nipple that comes straight out and it's broken off so there's nothing to connect the new fuel line to and i don't think you'll be able to see it uh actually it fell out no it's there let's see if i can get it out it's still in the old fuel line let's see oh, i broke part of it out yeah it's still in the old fuel line and this is garbage anyway so what we have to do, and we might have gotten lucky, normally it would be a molded plastic piece that comes out of the tank, all one piece from the factory, 
and you end up having to take a drill and drill a new hole in which is the right size I believe is 9 16 and then put the new unit on but it looks like somebody might have done this before and instead of using metal they used plastic and the same thing happened so let's see if we can pry this out uh, without too much death and destruction we want to try not to break it and get anything into the tank I don't care if it breaks outside the tank we just don't want to get anything inside the tank if we don't have to because even though your fuel filter will take care of the problem and you can see that this has already been done and it's a pain getting it out and most guys would go okay I'm gonna turn off the camera for a minute and get it out and show you but I like to do things in real time there it is it's the same setup as we're about to put in that's the rubber bushing and when it goes in boom they put a plastic piece in and it seals it around that hole but it looks like we got lucky and don't have to drill a new hole. Hopefully it's a standard 9 16 So I'm just going to wipe this off just a little bit. I'm not worried about anything but the direct part of El Holo right here. So that's clean. That's good enough. And I'm going to see if the new one will fit in there. Again, I'll put the part number down in the description. Hopefully... I like to draw things out that looks about the same so again the fat end the wider end goes outside the tank and the skinny nipple part goes in the hole oh that fit in there perfect push it down in there uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on here this is a 15w50 motor oil 50 w50 50 when people say you work on lawnmowers why do you need 50 weight oil this is what commercial zero turns use for their hydro system this is what they use for hydraulic fluid is 50 weight so i put a little bit of oil around it to make it going easier don't force it but you should be able to just push it down in place and bingo bango boingo we are set now it took me what 15 20 minutes i guess to take half this friggin' tractor apart. Because someone went to all the trouble to do that at one point and the tip broke off of that nipple. Oh, gotta love lawnmowers. I love lawnmowers because I make a living by my boats, my motorcycles, my cars, my vacations. I love working on these things. Most of the time I'm inside the shop working with the air conditioning. On a day like today, I got a pretty decent chance of some rain it rained this morning and it's supposed to rain again this afternoon which means money for me i don't know if you can see through those trees but it's real dark and gray but i had to take half this machine apart and you know what it would be scary if somebody said hey you know why don't you take half your friggin lawnmower apart so you can fix the fuel tank and save yourself 300 bucks 200 bucks from buying a tank somewhere online or at your local dealer and then paying somebody a hundred bucks to do it for you and what was that one two three four five bolts just to make it easier on the side of the column but two bolts in the front five bolts there is seven two in the back was nine bolts took the entire thing off and five of those were just for this control unit so that's it. I'm not going to bother to show you how to put it back on. Um, it's pretty cut and dry. Now I can take my fuel line here. Cut it the right length. Plug it on there after I put the tank back on. You put those. Everything's in reverse. I'll put the tank back on. Put those two bolts back in. Then I'll take the housing unit. Set it back in place. Put the two front bolts from underneath on put those three five back in the column then I'll come back here bolt this together from underneath putting the switch back in place 
and put the cup holder back put the gas tank back on the cap back on and we're right back where we started only we fixed the fuel for five bucks instead of 300 uh hope this video helps you have a great one see you soon